Welcome to the second part of the Tim Sort series. Uh, if you haven't had a look at the first video, there's a card over there. Now, the runtime that we have found till now is complexity of merge sort into n into log of n, which is the height of the tree, minus the number of levels that we can actually chop off the height of the tree. Okay, that is x. And we're trying to maximize x in our algorithm. One way that we saw was to actually take arrays of size 64 and convert them into sorted chunks so that we can knock off about five levels from the tree. Uh, the next idea we had was to, instead of doing the sorting ourselves, we can make it faster by already looking at sorted chunks in the data. So that's what we are trying to do now. Okay, this is the data. In this array, we are trying to take chunks of size three, all right? At least three. How do we deal with this data then? Have a look at the first element, eight. Okay, that has to be taken into consideration. Uh, coming, the next element is 12. 12 is larger than 8, so we are going to treat this chunk as an increasing sequence. Okay, so 8 comes in, 12 comes in, it's an increasing sequence, i, uh, and now 9 comes in. This is a problem because we can't start a new chunk till we have at least three elements. If we find an element which is violating the chunk uh, increasing order till, till this point, then we have to actually place it in the right position. And the way we do this is binary insertion sort. Let's take an example to understand this algorithm uh, at a deeper level. The first element we have is four. So in the sorted array, we are going to have four at index position zero. Then we are going to have the, algorithm, uh, the, the next element, which is 12. And 12 is fine, I mean, four is less than 12, so we have 12 over here. Um, index position is one. At nine though, we have a problem because 12 is actually larger than nine. So what needs to be done is a binary search on these two elements. At the binary search, we come to the midpoint and I'm going to uh, come to zero then. At zero, I find that nine is actually greater than four. So I go to 12. At 12, I find that I have run out of array. And so this is the correct position to actually push my element. So uh, I push in nine and all other elements uh, to the right of nine have to become coming here. So that's this element. 22 just falls in after 12, it's larger than 12. Uh, 11 though is going to create an issue. 11 has to, after a binary search, we come to the middle, which is position number one we see that 11 is greater than 9, so we have to go to the right side. We come over here uh, at position number 2. We see that 12 is greater than 11. So we have run out of array. This is the position that 11 should go to. So all elements after that are pushed, 12 and 22. Now index 5 is going to just come in, uh, and that is element number 7. Come to the middle, element 11. Uh, 11 says that it's to my left, so we come here between these two elements. Uh, we come to the middle, which is zero. Again, it says that seven is greater than me, so we come to the last element. Nine says it's less than me, but we have run out of array, so we have to actually push it over here. Nine gets pushed here. 11 gets pushed here. 12 gets pushed here. And 22 gets pushed here. You know, 10 is going to come in over here. It's just doing a binary search is going to give us the indexes, but I'm going to simplify my life by saying that 10 is coming in here. And we're going to have minus five and minus eight also come in. So they'll be coming in using binary search again at minus five and minus eight over here. And we're going to push all elements back. And over here at 10, we're going to push these elements to the right. So we are seeing here that there's some sort of binary search being done. In binary search, we have comparison operations which are expensive. But the total number of operations we have, if the chunk size is C, is log of C per element. So each element into the chunk size log. Um, what's the other thing? Well, we are shifting all the elements. We are pushing them to the right. As we saw with 10, we pushed elements to the right. So that is at most all elements to the right. Uh, the first element is going to push at most zero elements to the right. Second one is going to push one. The third one will push two elements to the right and so on and so forth. This is the worst case. 
So this is the sum of the first n minus 1 natural numbers. If the size is c, then it is c minus 1 into c upon 2. So this gives us order c square uh, shifts plus c log c comparisons. And we know that comparisons are expensive in the binary search. Th these are expensive operations. Uh, they also have poor data locality. These guys are a lot. C squared is much larger than C log C, but it's okay. I mean, uh, the, the pr operating system is going to be really efficient when it comes to shifting, making shift operations. And the way that we are counteracting the C square bit is by keeping the chunk size small. So we are not going to exceed the chunk size of 64. And we are going to make sure that the chunk size is at least 32. And the way we do this is binary insertion sort. So that is 9 and 12. Now we have a you know, chunk size of 3, but we are not going to stop because if we can get some additional elements, it's always nice. So uh, the next element is 17. That's good. It means that 17 goes after 12. Perfect. It's increasing. 15 is lesser than 17. So the minimum chunk size has already been hit of 3. So we're going to convert this to one chunk, which means that this entire bit is one chunk. Convert it to this part. All right. So rather, this is the one chunk. This is just the array positions that we have converted. Coming to 15, we see that that's the first element. So that's taken regardless, minus 1, which makes this a decreasing chunk. So that is a decreasing chunk, d. 15 minus 1, the next element has to be less than minus 1. Too bad, we get 22. 22 has to be placed in the correct position. So that comes over here. And we have with us a chunk of size 3. The next element should be uh, less than minus 1. But instead we get 11. So we are at this point now. And we have a chunk of size 3. The next element is not satisfying. So instead of trying to fix this chunk, we just ignore and use this as the second chunk. It's a decreasing chunk. The position we are at is 11. The next element is 10. That's good. Because it's decreasing now then. Um, now, because this chunk is decreasing, we need an element lesser than 7 now. Rather, lesser than 10. And the element is, ta-da, 7. <laughs> we get 7 here. Uh, the chunk size is 3. And you know that's the minimum chunk size. There's no more elements to look into. So this is a decreasing chunk, a decreasing chunk, and an increasing chunk. That's what we have converted this original array into. Three chunks. Now what do we do? Well. Increasing and decreasing chunks are difficult to deal with, so we just convert them all to increasing chunks. This is um, 7, 10, 11. This is minus 1, 15, and 22. And so we have three chunks of data, all increasing, or at least non-decreasing chunks. So now we can perform a merge sort on all of these three. But what have we done effectively? Well, we have enforced a minimum value for chunk size. And this makes sure that uh, when the merge sort algorithm actually kicks in, when it's going to do all that recursion and everything, instead of doing it on really silly chunks, like very small ones, we want to do it always on large chunks. And like we said, for, really sm for small arrays, insertion sort is really efficient. That's what's going to happen. This is very efficient. So the overall complexity for one chunk is pretty low. You know, searching is C log C and c square is the movement. OK, so again, this is the general idea of how we will be converting the chunks. We'll be converting uh, the array into chunks. And in the, in the next few videos, what we're going to do is we're going to learn uh, how this is done in an even more efficient way. OK, we are recording. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, this video is on Tim Sort. I had searched a lot of internet sources, but I didn't really find a really good source for Tim Sort, uh, except the guy who invented it, Tim Peter. So, uh, is it Peter Tim? Hi everyone, check whether the audio is working. Hi everyone.
Recently, I was going through a lot. Of Hi, everyone. It teaches you a lot about. Hi, everyone. But they don't go into as much detail as I'd like. So. Hi, everyone. That's the inspiration for making this video.